Richard Bruce here. I want to talk a little bit about 9-11 and I want to say that I feel that there will be no justice and no understanding until we open our minds to the fact that there are things happening here which we cannot believe or understand but it is connected directly to non-humans. Until we open up our mind that there are non-humans living among us, we are not going to understand what is happening here. This is really important. I realized that the UFO cover-up is connected to the 9-11 mystery. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. But first, I want to say that how we know that there is something suspicious about 9-11 that leads to the fact that there are non-humans is that there's no explanation for all the people involved in this complex operation that should have wives and families and so forth all the people in the White House, all the people in the military, all the people in the air traffic control centers who had to have known what they were doing and or should have spoken out afterwards if they knew defies the fact of human control over the situation. Somebody, some patriot, some decent person involved should have said, hey, wait a minute, we're not going to kill thousands and thousands of our own people, are we? Okay, let's take, for instance, the fighter jets that were scrambled and apparently sent to the wrong place. So, die hat jede Maus auf dem Radarschirm. Und in der Regel ist es so, in den NATO-Staaten geregelt, dass man zwischen 10 und 15 Minuten nach Alarmauslösung muss man in der Luft sein. Und genau dieses ist über zwei Stunden nicht passiert. Es hat nicht ein einziger Abfangjäger den Versuch gemacht, so eine Maschine abzudrängen oder überhaupt aufzuklären oder sonst irgendwas. Und diese Nebelkerzen, die hier geworfen worden sind, auch vom Untersuchungsausschuss des amerikanischen Kongresses, dass an dem Tag eben unglaublich viele Übungen der Luftwaffe stattgefunden hätten und dass man völlig verwirrt gewesen sei und gar nicht mehr unterscheiden könnte zwischen Real Life und Übung, das ist schlicht und einfach für jemanden, der aus der Luftwaffe kommt, nicht nachvollziehbar. Denn Übungsgeschehen sind, was die Flugsicherung angeht und die Luftverteidigung angeht, immer getrennt vom realen Leben des Flugverkehrs. Nachdem die Fragen der Presse nach den Abfangjägern, nach der Verteidigung immer schärfer wurden, wurde dann gesagt, doch, doch, da seien Abfangjäger gestartet. Behauptungen, dass sie gestartet seien, Behauptungen, dass sie unheimlich schnell geflogen seien, Behauptungen, dass sie aus irgendwelchen unerfindlichen Gründen, die mir überhaupt nicht erklärlich sind, nicht gewusst hätten, wo sie hätten hinfliegen sollen. Behauptungen, dass man sie deswegen einfach mal zum Meer hinausgeschickt hätte. Now, this was done on purpose, very clearly. And the question is, if there were people in the military that had to have known about this, why would they have consented to it? I mean, can it really be that they're all so guilty or all so evil that they would actually perpetrate this to their fellow human beings and murder their own citizens? knowingly because they would have to understand why they were doing what they were doing in order to think about all the people in the military and in the commercial flight control centers in the flight towers had to have had access to the control panels and the radar to see where these planes were headed and what was going on and and everybody there had to have been in on the operation because somebody would have said something by now. I mean somebody would have said, hey, you know, I was in there and I saw this irregularity and I said, how can this possibly be that we sent the jets to the wrong location? So that's just one example. 
Another example is all the logistics that would have been required in the White House and the Pentagon and all the people in government. I mean, uh, for a, a bare bones minimum of 20 people that had to have known about it. So the, the question is then, didn't any of these people object? I mean, they, you know, they just went along with it. So this is, a, this is a mystery because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I happen to believe that really most people are decent and would do the right thing, and Americans in general are decent and would do the right thing. However, if they didn't know what they were doing was wrong, that's one thing. But like I'm trying to point out here is that there's too many people, especially with expertise requiring skills, such as those who planted the time explosives that fell the Twin Towers and Building 7. Too many people with this type of competency and awareness involved in the operation to not have come forward and said, you know, hey, wait a minute, or objected and said, hey, wait a minute. So this leaves a big mystery as to how they got all these people to cooperate with it and maintain silence afterwards. And in my mind, it requires a beyond normal explanation. Let's just say for a bare bones minimum, I mean the utmost least number of people would be 50 and I think that's that's really too low. I would say more like a hundred to I mean or more of people involved in this operation, involved in the planning, had you know had to have clearance to be part of whatever it was to you know think about the communications that might have been intercepted by the NSA or the White House if they're not all centrally controlled anyway so the question becomes how did they control all these people or are they all you know reptilians as as, uh, as w what I think might be the case but the other possibility is that they are under mind control. They are being controlled by advanced technology. We saw uh, some clips from a movie about gang stalking about how they have patents on mind control, emotion affecting, long distance projected technology to control what people are thinking. And if you think about the just the UFO abduction cases, they it's clear that the technology exists, the alien technology exists, because we have all these people talking about lost time, talking about how they don't remember what happened, uh, talking about various feelings or things that they had, and so this means that the technology does exist to control people's minds. So my main point with, with that is that there's a lot of people that should have come forward or should have objected during the operation. Because I think that, you know, decent people, somebody would have said, hey, wait a minute, you know, this is, you know, my sister's brother's niece might be in the towers or something else. And they, you know, or they just, you know, just for plain decency's sake would have said, hey, you know, we can't, you know, somehow justify a mass murder of Americans by us, Americans. But if you say, as a 9-11, as a, as a person who believes that 9-11 is not what they're telling us. It's obviously something else. It's not Middle East terrorists. It was domestic terrorism, but it was not terrorism. It was, a, it was an operation. Just consider this. We still, do, to this day, really, if you understand that, do not know who did this, and we do not know why they did it, and we do not know all the facts about how they did it. We know some of the facts of how they did it. So we don't know the who, the what, or the why. And there are big, big questions about the who and the why that I believe if you narrow it down, you just cannot get away from the non-human aspect of it. Victims and family members of lost ones in 9-11 who want justice for your loved ones and for everybody who wants justice and realizes that thousands of people died and it was done on purpose by Americans to Americans and you, you finally realize that, you figured it out, you know it, but you don't want to accept something science fiction, 
something out of space, something, you know, that is going to really di make it discreditable. I say to you that you've got to open your mind. You've got to look. Look. It's actually not too hard. I have proven with empirical evidence that we have non-humans living among us. There is zero chance that anybody can repeat some of the effects that I've gotten and others have gotten. There's been a lot of people starting to contribute to this. More people are contributing to it now. So I say to you, open your eyes and realize. Because guess what? These non-humans are essentially like people we haven't seen. It's, it's, if, it's if they're a country that was isolated and we just haven't seen them and, and they've, the whole culture is built around denying that they exist so that when they, if anybody mentions it, you sound like a lunatic. They are people. They just are very, very weird to us, very, very different. Many of them are ancient with all kinds of incredible technology. It's clear no matter where you might think they come from, whether it's from outer space, whether it's from inside the earth, whether God created them, whether they're evolved naturally, one thing is clear. There is enough footage to know that we've got non-humans and they are high-tech. And they are living among us and they are in outer space. They have ships. That's just, it's beyond doubt. There's no way anybody can fake all the UFO footage. There's no way anybody can fake all of the shape-shifting footage that's now come, more recently come to light. So, I say to you, please, don't close your mind because they are counting on you not believing it. That's their, that is their weapon. That's how they're staying in power, my friends, my, my fellow human beings, whether you're American or anybody else. If you can hear my voice, I, I ask you that we, what we have to do in order to solve this problem, because our world is under lockdown. I mean, Peggy Kane said it, you know, in a great way. She said, we're under lockdown. We don't get out. We're in like a prison system, okay? We're not getting out. We're not going to see freedom. Don't count on the, the Space League of Lights or some other, you know, stuff that they're saying, okay? We haven't seen anything, any change at all in the wicked regimes that run this world, okay? None. There's no change. There's no, you know, uh, victory over the spaceship that uh, something, something reptilians were on the way and then they defeated them or some other BS. Don't believe it. Don't buy it. Nothing's changed. We have to stand up. We have to do something about it. And the first step is actually believing that we have non-humans and incredibly evil and powerful and high-tech wielding non-humans and living among us. And I highly recommend the movie that uh, David Icke did with Arizona Wilder because she gives the most interesting revelation as to why these creatures are keeping the extraterrestrials a secret and, and what the whole cover-up is about, why they're covering up the truth, because they can't have humans en masse finding out that they need human flesh and blood to live. That's what they can't have everybody finding out and that they're living among us and that there is a way to see them. There is a way to find them. And, and as a matter of fact, that's not that hard. As I've said, you can take a video camera to your television set and guaranteed if you scrub through it slowly, through all your movie stars and actors or whatever, you're going to see these features start to come out. And the more you look at it and the more you study it, the more you'll recognize it. So this is very important for you to realize and and not be afraid of this concept because as long as we run from this concept of non-humans, as long as we laugh at it, as long as we push it away and say, nope, you know what, I'm, I'm going to lose my job if I talk about this. I'm going to look like an idiot to my friends if I talk about this. I'm going to be ostracized. I'm going to be part of the fringe weirdos that aren't accepted. As long as we do that, you, 9-11, family members are not going to see justice for your loved ones. Every second you waste saying, no, there's no, you know, there's no non-humans living among us, there's no aliens, there's no anything, is the longer, is another day that your beloved family member that was murdered and you know was murdered gets no justice. Zip. Because they're counting on you to not believe in non-humans.
intelligent, high technology wielding, vicious, evil, ancient non-humans. In particular, the, the reptilians, but there are a bunch of other ones. Canines, felines, arachnids, or scorpions, as I believe the Bible calls them. So there's all kinds, and, and a whole bunch more that we probably don't even know about. But one thing remains is that they're not telling us. They're all unified. All these non-humans are, are unified in not telling us because their whole existence here on Earth and their whole operation and, and what all they get from us, the, the babies that they're breeding, they have women in cages that are specifically in there to give birth to babies to be sacrificed at these ceremonies because babies are a delicacy to the reptilians, okay? This is going to be going on. People in underground bunkers that are being tortured and experimented on, this is going to continue until we as a race mature enough and open up our hearts and our minds enough to realize and take seriously and start waking up our fellow humans by uploading footage or whatever else it takes, showing them, talking about it, developing tests, whatever it takes to, to wake up people to realize and break through the belief barrier because that's what's holding everything in place is the belief barrier see these reptilians pulled off 9-11 with the bet that in general people wouldn't believe it and they were right it was just so outrageous people wouldn't wouldn't buy it people people couldn't believe it I mean most of all of my family members do not believe that 9-11 was an inside job. They do not believe it. And they are intelligent, highly educated. We're talking about medical doctor, doctorates in mathematics, physics, all kinds of people that are, you know, that have intelligent, high-end degrees. Unlike me, I'm just a regular guy. I never, never got all that. But they can't, they can't believe it. They can't even see it. You got people that are commenting on my YouTube channel I don't see it. And you can see the shape of the ear in this one that I just posted. You can see it looks like a some sort of weird claw. It's obviously not a human shape. And it, nope, can't see it. <sighs> Even before I believed in 9-11 as being an inside job, I suspected strongly that the UFO cover-up had to be non-human run because of the simple fact that humans eventually would not keep from other humans the most important interesting information we could possibly learn which is that we are not alone in the universe far from it turns out the universe is quite big as we know unless all of astronomy is a lie and I don't think it is but that space is filled with all kinds of sentient life. And by sentient, I mean intelligent, high-tech wielding. And that most other planets have aliens coming and going, sharing technology, sharing resources, and yes, sometimes fighting and having wars. But our planet, Earth, apparently is remote enough that the creatures that are here who are the ruling faction, I believe, are a hybrid reptilian humans that are the rulers of Earth, the Blue Bloods, as some people call them. Uh, and I think that the uh, it's some interesting information I just ran into, but apparently uh, these Blue Bloods are very talented because of the mix of the two uh, races the human and the reptilian and that's and they shapeshift between the two forms and they have to consume blood in order to maintain their human form but the point that I'm making uh, that in the connection to 9-11 is that this secrecy on the part of our government and even world governments but in particular America keeping the most interesting information think about that this 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 outrageous, ridiculous lie that they that they say there's two main reasons, which is that a the public will panic. Oh, the public will really panic. We've been watching Star Trek and hearing about UFOs and aliens, and everybody wants to see an alien. Are you really thinking that 
you know, you're going to disrupt society, all the churches will go nuts or something if they find out space is filled with sentient life. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. And the other excuse is that we have to keep our alien technology from the Russians and the Chinese in order to keep them from getting our high tech and keep have the advantage. So that so we so that really that we lie to our fellow people, our citizens, about the fact that we are not alone in the universe over that. Not enough. So it, it and and somebody and, and the, the sheer competence of it, somebody should have leaked it. And a few people have, but they're so it's somehow the the information doesn't get out into the mainstream the news won't report it you know they'll report little tidbits to kind of make you think that they're not you know against it but really they don't they don't really get into it they don't really you know take a, a bold step talking about aliens and there's and there's no proof there's no aliens coming on YouTube that are either living inside the earth or come down in a spaceship or whatever and here's my spaceship I'm an alien coming right here on YouTube and everybody's looking at it and saying, wow, is that a special effect? But it's not because it's really an alien. We don't see that yet. Why? I think because the ruling faction, the reptilian hybrids that need humans to eat and others, others that feed off of humans and or use humans in other ways, they don't want their resource to be ruined by other extraterrestrials coming in and telling us that we're being used. So that's why they keep them all away. And there's footage of them shooting at incoming extraterrestrial craft to keep them away. And you see the, you see the extraterrestrial craft make a, make a turn away as this one uh, ship that's from the Earth fires something at it. And you see it turning away. And the, uh, the, the big thing that clued me into this was the Aztec crash, which is very similar to the Roswell crash. It was, happened one year earlier in Aztec, New Mexico, or uh, Arizona, Azte Aztec, Arizona. And what, what somebody said in that documentary that I saw and the books that were written about it was that they suspected that the Americans shot them down. And when I heard that, it made sense that they shot down that one and they shot down the one in Roswell. Why? To keep them from meeting people here on Earth and telling them that they are not alone in the universe and that they could have pollution-free energy and all this other stuff that would make our world so much better uh, because the, uh, the reptilian ruling faction can't have regular humans getting their hands on anti-grav and time travel or whatever technology or whatever free energy technology because if enough people perhaps experimenting with that and they would eventually uncover their whole existence and what's really going on and be able to stop their ironclad rule over the earth. So they've done a very good job of suppressing this whole thing from humans finding out about it. And if anybody does find out about it or have contact, they have psychics. They probably have rooms and rooms full of all these psychics and people that they probably abduct and force them to be psychics and find anybody who they detect mind has had co real contact with extraterrestrials and or have technology or something that could wake the general public up and prove the whole thing and blow the whole thing wide open and they immediately attack those those people and get them under control so they're keeping a lid on the earth and and humans from finding out meanwhile in their multi-pronged approach which I think David Icke does a good job of explaining they're bombarding us with hypnosis through entertainment um, distracting us by making the you know you're living you, you there's no matter no matter how hard you try you either have to scrape and scrape and scrape the only way you're going to be rich and relaxed is if you're a confirmed wicked sellout in my opinion because there's no way you can be rich they'll, they'll allow you to have a lot of money and be big in business unless they some have some way of knowing that your mindset isn't going to pop open and say and turn on them they have a way of detecting someone who's heart might be open to realizing the truth and I think that's a really an important point it's you know you could have the highest IQ the most competent business demeanor but I think it, it does actually boil down to your heart what are you gonna put up with what evil are you gonna withstand or not withstand
As I was considering the possible causes of 9-11 in terms of the why and looking for information regarding this, one of the most interesting sources was from a gentleman named James Rink and his YouTube channel Supreme 600 and he has a documentary three parts called Change is on the Horizon. I highly recommend it. It's quite interesting. I do not share all of its beliefs. However, I do think that it has by far and away the most interesting inside information which is really uh, quite unmatched in uh, that I have seen and also uh, the historical accuracy and description of the laws and so forth leaves me with the impression that he knows what he's talking about as far as what really happened and, and apparently 9-11 happened right before the Nasara Act was uh, for, uh, by, by gunpoint apparently they had forced it into law and they were going to have to announce it and Greenspan was going to announce it and 9-11 uh, provided the cover and excuse to not do so so as I was looking at this I think that at least in part Nasara was the cause of 9-11 Nasara is the most groundbreaking reformation to sweep not only this country, but our planet in its entire history. The act does away with the Federal Reserve Bank, the IRS, the shadow government, and much, much more. Nasara implements the following changes. Zeroes out all credit card, mortgage, and other bank debt due to illegal banking and government activities. This is the Federal Reserve's worst nightmare, a jubilee or a forgiveness of debt. Abolishes the income tax, abolishes the IRS, Employees of the IRS will be transferred into the U.S. Treasury National Sales Tax Area. Creates a 14% flat rate non-essential new items only sales tax revenue for the government. In other words, food and medicine will not be taxed, nor will use items such as old homes. Increases benefits to senior citizens. Returns constitutional law to all courts and legal matters. Reinstates the original title no building limit. Hundreds of thousands of Americans under the control of foreign powers will lose their citizenship be deported to other countries and barred from re-entry for the remainder of their life, and millions of people will soon discover their college degrees are now worthless paper. Establishes new presidential and congressional elections within 120 days after Nassar's announcement, the interim government will cancel all national emergencies and return us back to constitutional law. Monitors elections and prevents illegal election activities of special interest groups. Creates a new U.S. Treasury rainbow currency backed by gold, silver, and platinum precious metals, ending the bankruptcy of the United States, initiated by Franklin Roosevelt in 1933. Forbids the sale of American birth certificate records as chattel property bonds by the U.S. Department of Transportation. Initiates new U.S. Treasury bank system in alignment with constitutional law. Eliminates the Federal Reserve System. During the transition period, the Federal Reserve will be allowed to operate side by side of the U.S. Treasury for one year in order to remove all Federal Reserve notes from the money supply. Restores financial privacy. Retrains all judges and attorneys in constitutional law. Ceases all aggressive U.S. government military actions worldwide. Establishes peace throughout the world. Releases enormous sums of money for humanitarian purposes enables the release over 6,000 patents of suppressed technologies that are being withheld from the public under the guise of national security, including free energy devices, anti-gravity, and sonic healing machines. Even if many members in Congress and government and high officials would be under uh, prosecution, if uh, the truth of the books was opened and criminal activity was exposed in terms of you know where the money in the Federal Reserve actually goes to and and many other you know horrible crimes still not enough in my opinion to justify mass murder of Americans by Americans and hundreds of thousands of people in the Middle East which simply didn't have anything to do with it so as I consider that plus my awareness of the reptilians need to keep their race a secret, I came to my current conclusion, maybe right, maybe wrong, but my current theory is that the reason the, the reptilians who are primarily behind it 
took the risk of the exposure of the 9-11 operation, knowing that lots of evidence would come out afterwards and all the suppression and effort that they would have to make surrounding it, um, the motivation was to conceal the existence of their non-human race. Hey, how you doing? We help filming something? Yeah, I'm filming a little documentary. Don't film me. Don't film me. Why? Because I'm not. You're not supposed to. Uh, I didn't read any rules. This is a public library area. So why? I'm um, sorry, sir. Why? Why can't I film? I'm this. I'm not trying to be hostile, sir. Right over my head. Notice? They like to catch me when I'm leaving. So if you're wondering the mystery of this, then allow me to point you to something you may not have seen before. And if you ask, who could have possibly done this? And we have no explanation. Then I say, you might want to look at this. So if after all this time, the mystery of 9-11 still plagues us, we do not know who did this, and we do not know why they did it, and we can't even figure out how they can keep the American people and the world in general from realizing that it was an inside job. I mean, everybody is asleep on this. Otherwise, the people would rise up and we would kill these people. Period. Now, if you are going to ask this question and there is no discernible answer, and then you notice things start appearing on YouTube, which simply, after a while, cannot be denied. People speaking out about it, people writing about it, people sharing their experiences, people uploading evidence, shapeshifter footage. And we have these two things, a huge mystery on the one hand, and then a non-human existence apparently on the other, which is not telling themselves, talking about themselves, and being open about who and what they are. We might draw a conclusion that they have something to do with it, okay? This is the most common point which is that there are things going on that defy human explanation. Therefore, I think it is appropriate now, with enough evidence, to stop closing our minds, to stop being 
shallow in our thinking because this is what they're counting on to keep their hold over earth. That's why in order to free our world we have to free our minds first from the belief barrier. The belief barrier is what's keeping them safe. But what's keeping the belief of people in place? There's something even deeper that I want to get into because if you don't understand the whole picture of what's happening there'll be this huge gap in the reality of what you're able to comprehend concerning what is going on. Now if you haven't followed events concerning the reptilian agenda you can be sure that many people will tell you this that they kill people who expose them or their agenda and or people that they no longer need and pose a problem for them. They murder people on a continual basis. Now I gave you my witness in the Dragons of Blade Runner that I believe that they sent Paul Walker and another serpent to come and eat up my flesh but then they stumbled and fell as the scripture says crashing into the only gas line in the area and burning alive. And I realize a lot of people don't believe my witness about that that the Spirit revealed to me that this is what happened. But I can tell you something which is that one thing is odd about this experience which is that all the harassment and all the stuff that they do to try to dissuade me from doing this doesn't add up with the urgency that they seem to have. In other words, they should have done something much stronger like got in my face or maybe beat me up as they did somebody else and somebody else witnessed to me that they do even the police in some states uh, and even in, in California uh, will beat you if they have a problem and there's no there's no law lawyer or anybody that you can turn to and occasionally there will be a case but really they can get away with it and nothing like that happened to me and in fact um, really the only thing that's been done to me are annoyance tactics besides the fact that I said that there were at least two more attempts besides that one with Paul Walker to do me in and all I can say is that if this was a normal situation that people and New Agers describe where there's no God there's no heaven and hell and so forth and there's no overpower such as God in control of everything then it would just be so much easier and so much cleaner to just get rid of someone like uh, me the way they got rid of Tim Russert which I think they they somehow gave him a, a heart attack for exposing what he did but um, they didn't do that and they can't do that and I came to understand that they can't do that and that's why I'm even I've even been able to continue this because as I gave a witness I mean it was like 15 minutes after I uploaded my first reptilian shapeshifter movie feature that I got seven helicopters over my apartment and this continual harassment that has continued to this day and as I mentioned I bought a dash camera and I caught some of that footage and I uploaded it and showing that the police were using these tactics but they weren't you know they weren't getting in my face I thought somebody was gonna talk to me I mean you know it's like after all this activity they're spending money and time even if they're just using the the blue beam technology to holograph uh, chopper harass me and plane harass me and or shoot stuff because I can hear it hitting the windows you can hear it creaking as they as they fly over so they shooting something at it I don't know what it is I can hear the walls creaking okay now I, I know that sounds crazy but if you were in my shoes and you witnessed it and I don't have anybody who's gonna be with me to witness so it's just gonna be me telling you this and it's up to you whether you want to believe I've, I've got my head screwed on straight or not but I'm telling you this is real and they were doing it against me and all this stuff doesn't add up to the fact that you know they could have just fired an invisible heart stopper beam at me and just that's it you know suffered an aneurysm or a heart attack or whatever and uh, problem solved they don't have to put up with this problem of my YouTube channel and all these people starting to see that these non-humans are real and they and I think that they uh, frequency fence the uh, YouTube user is who I learned the most from and was the most convinced that this was real 
went out and bought the Blu-ray of The Matrix and took it apart. And that's how I really realized this whole thing was real and that you could actually just go and buy movies, film them with your regular video camera, and then take it apart in your video editor. And it's amazing what you'll see. Non-humans. They're, they're a bunch of non-humans. So um, what I'm saying is that this whole thing, especially with the big mystery of 9-11, is it's bigger than just you know, an alien race coming here and controlling us. And I think that has something to do with it, although you know, aliens is, a, is really kind of a subjective term because according to the scripture, according to the Bible, they are actually made from the dust of the earth in, in a similar way to the way Adam was made, but they were made after Adam, according to the, the order of the Bible. Even though I am not a disbeliever in ancient aliens, we're talking 25,000, 50,000, 400,000, millions of years ago possibly, uh, had humanoid, at least life forms, or bipedal, intelligent, high-tech wielding alien life from other planets. You know, the whole Lemuria story I think is true. I think the Atlantis thing and, and the whole, you know, a lot of the stuff that you hear going around, it's true. I think it. I believe it's true, and that these these were real humans, except that they weren't the same as Adam. In other words, maybe they weren't called man, but they were. They're something else. I don't know, but they're human, and and I I think also compatible with humans in terms of they were sexually compatible. They could they could interbreed, and they've been they were here for a long time, and even way before the uh, first accounts of Sumer, uh, you know, six thousand years ago, somewhat. Now, um, even but with even with all that, I came to understand that the God story is more important than everything. Okay, and what you'll notice with a lot of these New Agers is that they won't mention the possibility of there being a moral ramification to what we're doing in the world, and or a heaven and hell or a central God. They'll just talk about ancient aliens on a distant planet, Lemuria, coming here doing such and such, they created, then the Anunnaki created human beings and so forth, and this is what we got evolved all the way up until today. They won't, like I will, talk about that stuff and the other side, the God and heaven and hell and eternity and God created it all idea. This, uh, this, those, those two concepts won't jive for them. They won't, they'll just discredit the Bible. Okay, people like David Icke, for instance, will just, you know, chapter after chapter, page after page of his book, The Children of the Matrix, is, you know, upon further research, Jesus never existed, so forth and so on. Okay, the Romans kept accurate record. There would have been some record of him. Right. You think Satan's going to leave a record? It's all got to be by what? Faith. Okay, now, I know that sounds like a convenient excuse, but again, if you look at God's Word carefully, you will see that it is way beyond a simple, some, some kind of trick by reptilians or something else. This is much bigger than that, and it's also perfect. It's, it doesn't seem like it's perfect to us. It doesn't seem like it's right in many places to us, but it is. And you'll understand that because you'll, if you triangulate it, and then the, the Spirit will give you the, the inner knowing and understanding, and then you'll, you'll get clues in your life. And it's all very subtle because we, at this time, we cannot be given to know for sure. When you see the angel and he says, okay, you're going to be doing this such, such, such and such, and you see it's, it's an angel and you know it's a miracle and everything, then you have some sure idea of what's happening. But that, for the most part, that's not the case. And, I, and even probably people who have seen something like that, they still really don't know for sure. You're still, there's still an opportunity for doubt. Even Jesus on the cross said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He had his moment of doubt because of the pain, because of the things that uh, affect our flesh in the world cause us to, to have those doubts. But in any case, I'm just saying that if you're trying to pin exactly the who, the what, and the why completely on the serpents, which I do think is, is the primary thing, and or these non-humans involved, and they're human allies, but there's an even bigger cause to it, and even something more fearful than that, even than being eaten, because that only lasts a short time. And what God's Word clearly says is that there's an eternity afterwards, okay? 
That's the scariest thing to me. And the, there's too many, folks, there's too many witnesses of heaven and hell to dismiss that these are not a serious possibility. I can't prove it. But guess what? If you open your mind to that, if you're not... See, this is how you begin to see that there's something wrong with people who have a complete, you know, atheist or whatever viewpoint that completely cuts out the possibility of being God because they cut it out. They cut out that possibility from their mind. Cut out that idea from, okay, maybe that's possibly true or maybe it isn't. They just, they, they'll just be adamant. And you notice how mad they'll get about it. And I know about that anger because I used to have it when confronted before I believed. I'd be very angry at my sister for talking about hell and God and everything. It really, really pissed me off. But I learned later it was true. And I, the reason I was angry is because each person has a seed of knowledge deep down because the spirit is everywhere. And we live as enemies of that spirit even while we believe most of my Christian life. I would say, even and even now, because of the flesh that we inhabit, we are enemies of the truth, enemies of the good spirit of God. We continually have to conform ourselves to it if we want to break through, break out of the misery of the flesh and this current life and the pathway to hell, which is the default path. If you go on the normal path, that the serpents want you to go on. They want you to continue in your careers. They want you to continue watching TV and doing your sports and all the stuff that you love, which it will be revealed later are sins, and filthy, disgusting sins that looked right and felt good and we w want to do something positive with our lives. And how can you say this is evil? That's how perplexing it is. It's very perplexing. I'm not saying I understand it. These things are too big for me to speak of. I'm just relating my experience that when you wonder what happened to your loved ones and you say to yourself, okay, we don't know who and what behind 9-11. And then you say, okay, wait a minute. Okay, now you're talking about non-humans. All right, let's just say even that's true. And we, we can't do anything about it. We have all the people hypnotized and so they, they, they're unable to believe in the idea of non-humans. Now, I want to say, what good does it do you, whether you die in an accident or a planned attack like 9-11, or whether you die of old age? What does it matter if you all go to the same place? Because do not be fooled by people who try to tell you that you're going to go someplace else other than heaven or hell when you die. The scripture makes clear it is given to man to die once and then the judgment. And you're going to go to heaven or hell and you're not going to heaven unless you have Jesus Christ. There are even Muslims and people of other faiths who can attest to this in their near-death experiences where Jesus came and talked to them. So I say to you, don't put it off. You have an option. God is reaching out to you. Everyone has heard the gospel. That's what the scripture says. There is not one creature who has not heard the gospel, even so-called natives in some hidden forest somewhere. Every single soul here has heard it. Everyone has the opportunity to accept or reject and how that works, again, I don't know. But what I do know is that you have an opportunity. And God is offering eternal life in heaven free of pain, sorrow, and death. If you will repent in the faith of the work of His Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross, who was crucified and then risen the third day as a sacrifice and symbol and point of leadership for all those who would believe in Him to receive eternal life and to make friends with the Lord and to be a servant of Him for He says His yoke is light and we know from the scripture that there is no pain and sorrow here in the world comparable 
to the reward that God has in store, though no man has comprehended it. So I urge you, if you're on the fence about this, don't put it off. Realize it's an urgent situation. It's your soul at stake. There's no family member, there's no friend that can save you or vouch for you. You have to choose yourself and make a sacrifice of this worldly life yourself to take up your cross and follow Jesus, which you'll understand more as you study the scripture. But it essentially means sacrificing the pleasures and the joy and the ego of this life to be given a whole new set that's so much better. And that the things that seem evil to us now, in other words, the things that we don't like of God that seem evil to us, we will be converted so that we understand these things as being good and experience them as being good and our hearts will be set aright as the scripture says. So if you haven't and you're considering it, say a simple prayer. God is always listening. He knows if you're deciding to come to Him. So just say a simple prayer along these lines. Just say, Father in heaven, I have heard the story of your son, Jesus Christ, and that he has died to take the place of anyone's sin who will come to him, and that he will give him complete escape from hell and from death. Just And then say, Father, I thank you that you will accept me, and I ask that you reveal the scripture to me so that I might be saved and go to heaven and not go to hell and live and not die. Friends, everybody who's listening, this may seem wrong to you, but I urge you to open your mind and give that a try because I happen to know that it's true, and I happen to know that this is the winning ticket, okay? It's not some sort of other spiritual leadership or being taken off world or some alien hocus pocus or whatever. If you're here in the world, in a human body or even a, a beast body, you have the opportunity to make a friend of God and live righteously in the spirit of his son, Jesus Christ. And he will give you the knowledge. He will give you the wisdom. And you may not be perfect. You may be floundering as many are, and not know anything for sure, but you will know that the scripture is true the more you carefully read it.